Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We often get asked, what exactly was the best footage we ever got on our many shark films? There's quite a lot. We've done quite a lot of shark fishing. Well, we've whittled it down to just five, really. Here they are, in ascending order. First up is Wayne Combin with that immense pool eagle shark that we caught in just a 17-foot dinghy. Check it out. <laughs> also, we have to tell you while we've been waiting for this shark, Wayne's had three double figure bull ups, haven't you, Ter? More than that, I've had about five. It's been amazing, uh, amazing bottom fishing, but this is what we've come for. This is when I uh, regret letting my gym membership slip. <laughs> oh. Now the fish is not a million miles away, but when they get close to the boat, that's when we got the danger. He ain't far away. We want to see it. We, we, we just want to see it. No panic. I, I see the macro again, the bait again. You know, slipped up the line. Look. Yeah, yeah. He won't be far away from that. You can generally see that grey shape under the. That'll be locked on a swivel about six feet or so. It's blasted up the line when he took. The mac was blown up the line. Oh, you see him kick there. Shook his head then, and he, he goes wide. Speed wind. Okay, wait, I'm wait for the wait for the change, Wayne. You know the, the, the angle change and they're going under the boat. I'm gonna put the camera out. Now I'm going to try and pop a tag in this and we're going to tow it, recover it. I'm not going to get the hook out, I'm going to try and release the fish. The bulk of this fish has to be seen to be believed. That was a great fish, but that's my fifth place. Now I'm gonna look for something a bit better. Hmm, wait a minute. That was filmed from above the water. I've moved on a little bit now. I'm filming underneath the water. And you wanna see the footage I get in the next clip. And I also got to luckily land myself a huge Galapagos shark. I believe one of the most aggressive pack sharks that you could probably find. Here it is. <laughs> I'll stop this film now and then I'll cut to when we get it back in. What do you think of that, Graham? Hey, mate, way too big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you. 
Just keep it just slacking the drag off a touch. Okay. Yeah. Thirty foot. That shark was in excess of 550 pounds, and that was the skipper telling me what it weighed. And as for the one biting the carcass in slow motion, I don't like to think how big it was. Oh, my God, it was big. Now, talking of big, we're back in England again, off the south coast of the back of the Isle of Wight, and you'll recognize the chap from the first film, Wayne Combin. I was out with Wayne aboard, yes, another small boat, Exactly the same, his own boat, a 17-foot dinghy, and we locked into a big thresher shark. It's believed to be the biggest ever filmed on HD. In fact, it might be the biggest ever filmed in British waters, period. Check it out. It's some animal. Is he still on? Is he? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's amazing how much you can oh. slack line you. If you're oh. not on the ball, he's going to roll up the line. Yeah. Sorry if I sound a bit manic, but I feel well, manic. Well, this no, is... that was a big thresher shark, man. That's a big one. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> is he still on, we say? Yeah. Don't forget, this is a homemade, home tied trace and everything I've got on yeah, here. So you can see where the strike is, yeah. He can only get his body out of the water. Graham is a lump. That's the, that's the fourth time he's cleared the water. Yeah. Cleared it. Thresher sharks are predominantly caught around uh, the south coast of England, mostly all English fish. They don't seem to get them up in Scotland, even around in Ireland they get the occasional, but they're very, very rare. But down off the back of the Isle of Wight is Thresher Central, we're going to call it. There's always some fish there, and it's up to you to put the time in, get the weather in a small boat, go out there, see if you can hook up. It was an immense fish and we had an immense battle on our hands trying to keep pace with this one. It was just power on with the rod and then power on with the boat. If we just sat there, I feel that a shark of this size would just empty the reel down to the stub. Great fun, great sport. We're going to let the shark go and it was really something to get this fish up. And when I leaned out to grab hold of the wire, OMG, it was a true English lump. Well, the thresher shark's made famous by that huge long tail. Do you know what? About a year or so later, I went out with Wayne, same spot. We could not land the shark. It was immense. We don't know who it's 800, 1,000. We don't even know what species of shark it was. It towed us to like half a mile or so. And then after half an hour, the hook pulled. That's right. It happens in with the biggest sharks. Now then, there's something called solitaire shark fishing. Not many people do it. It means solitaire, lay individual. Nobody touches anything. On a charter boat, we're using a charter boat. The best way to do this, the proper way as we call it, small boat fishermen, is got to be in your own dinghy, a small boat. You've got to bait up, cast out, hook up, fight the fish, get hold of the wire, tag the shark, release the shark and let it go all unaided, no help at all. My top solitaire shark came, a poor beagle shark. <laughs> On one of those rare summer days that we get occasionally in England, 
very, very rare, where the sea is absolutely flat calm. It's an idyllic setting for a shark fisherman because basically a lot of the time we're fishing at anchor. We don't drift the boat, we're fishing at anchor. And I'm fishing with Wayne Combat again. He's working away there with the chum. The chum is a mash fish that attracts the shark, hopefully to the boat. It was a day that all small, small boat anglers absolutely long for. You're out in a tiny 17 foot dinghy and this is what you want. Flat calm is enough to make you want to sunbathe because with shark fishing, it's basically waiting and waiting and waiting. It's basically, I would say, 95% inactivity and 5% manic. So that fish is nowhere near played out as we well know. Yeah. No, he's ripping. Yeah. He's ripping. There's the float. Ooh, mama. First one of the season. First shark of the season. And that rod and reel I was using is just a regular boat type fishing rod and reel outfit that you would use, 50 pound line, and it was beating me around this shark. You see the big head shakes it's given me there, jerks you right down, because you, you you might not think there's a lot of pressure on the rod, but trust me, it's a tuna stand up stick, so basically it's only the tip that goes around. Most of it beats up on the bottom two thirds of the blank, makes it a very great, well it's a good rod for a beating tuna on, certainly in any sort of big fish, but in small boat fishing, you've got to duck and weave around the back of the boat, it's not like a charter boat where you've got tons of space. Small boat sharking, for us guys who go small boat sharking, it is the only way to go. One on one, it's the old man and the sea stuff, all comes flooding back, and well, did we get the fish? Of course we get the fish. It's the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. It's only a Aerial in the way and bits and pieces guys, but I'm trying to get a different perspective on this fish and the fight as well. He's doing what he wants at the moment. And this is the bat killer. Oh, beat me to death. Be careful there, Graham. Oh, my word. How big do you want it to be, guys? Is that big enough? Here's the tack stick. Missed him. Now on you. Hopefully I don't. Hopefully I don't. I'm balanced up here. Looking back at me, guys. Watch yourself, Graham. Yeah. Things we do for TA fishing, eh? Hope you fellas appreciate it. That's a good fish, Whoa, even through this lens. It never does it justice, not like B&E, you can take our words for that. If you don't believe us, get out here, catch one like this yourself and film it. In a 17 foot dinghy. Right. Well, do I want to land another one after that solitaire effort? Maybe not at my age, maybe that might be the limit. Get to about four or 500 pounds on your own. It's quite a big shark but I like to push the limits with smaller gear on a smaller species of shark. So how about a fly rod? Ah, oh, yeah, loads of guys get them on fly rods. I oh, know, some guys use 12 weight fly rods, heavy duty ones, great big center drag reels, heavy fly line, and some of them just hook a piece of meat on the end, cast it out and hook the fish. No, 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 guys, it's fly fishing you've got to use a fly. You can't go putting pieces of meat on it, it destroys the idea of it. Even an idiot can catch one on a fly rod with a piece of meat on the end of it. You've got to do it with a fly. The trip a few years ago, we were making a DVD about blue shark fishing. I'm not gonna say we got fed up catching so many blue sharks on regular gear. Put it like this, we were in a 17 foot open boat. We caught quite a lot of sharks that day, but it was flat calm. That's ideal conditions for fly fishing. Spotting the shark, casting to it, and I'm using a trout rod. I've got a blue shark on a fly rod. I don't know whether you can see the bend. I don't know how long it's going to last. 
but I've definitely got a blue shark and a fly rod. Oh no, he's got my other line. Oh, what a cluster. I'm getting a bit lucky. I feel not. Hang on, hang on, let's see if I can, if I can get that one on. We, might, we need a bit of totally awesome luck here, guys. Oh. We haven't bloody went for it. We haven't got totally awesome luck. Oh shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, he's going up there. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's stopped. I've got to get myself a new belly button. Oh, well, Wayne's got the, uh, he's got the rod out of the way, the bottom rod. I've got the most unbelievable bend in my reservoir number eight stroke nine trout rod with a well, it looks like a 50, 40, 50 pound blue shark on. <laughs> and you don't really get 40 to 50 pound trout, do you, in the reservoir? So here at Totally Awesome, we try to fish on the extreme edge. This is possibly over the edge. Whew, mama. Now, I'll tell you what I have got, because I got burnt on that first smoke out run. I've got a fingerless yachting leather glove. So I can, you know, feel line going through. But more important, because this is a direct drive salmon reel, I can palm this ball. I've got no other way of applying. Oh, oh, oh ow, ow! My glove's gonna catch fire. Oh. That is exactly what that glove's for. Otherwise, oh, I think I need some more pressure. Ah, oh, dear me. What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what Graham's done. Uh, he basically said, I'm gonna try for one on a fly rod. And he got me to throw a teaser out, which is a piece of mackerel fillet, which uh, I didn't have a hook in it. And around came a blue in the slick, and I teased it with the mackerel. And then Graham chucked out his uh, white feather fly, and the shark was not messing about. It was charged up big time, wasn't it? Oh, he, was, he, he wasn't messing about. He I mean, to kill something, definitely. Yeah, and uh, Graham teased the fly in front of him a couple of times, and he nailed it. And as you can see, this is the result. This is after 10 sharks on standard boat fishing gear. This is what, this is the, how silly can we get here at Totally Awesome? <laughs> <laughs> we love this shark fishing, you know, boy. There's some bend in that rod. <laughs> it's fucking maxed <laughs> out, buddy. <laughs> now, I'd like to apologise as well, folks, for all you, um, oh, I think they're politely called tackle tarts out there. You're somebody bound to have, bound to have noticed that my rod rings are held on with electrical tape. And that's because I use this one for saltwater fly fishing. Oh, and I don't want to spend a lot of money on an expensive rod. And as you can see, the tip's under the water. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm nearly under the water. Oh, digging and digging. I have got on here a substantial amount of backing. That's, that's a yellow line you can see. The fly line, <laughs> I think that's that by the eyes of silly. But that's a 30 yard length of fly line. In fact, it's less than 30 yards. It's a 400 grain uh, sinking level line. And I just literally, before I tied the fly on, which is one of my old shark flies, it hasn't been sharpened for about 14 years. But we've had so many sharks, I just thought, you know what, I can't be bothered to even. Uh... Oh, I've got a fray in the line, I think. Just for the tip ring, there's something very, very nasty going on just by the tip ring. I don't know if you can see that. That looks like something that should be on the reel and not out there in the open. So I'm gonna hope I can get this fish. Whether something's frayed, it's coming through the butt ring now. I know exactly what that is. <laughs> That's a grand pull and I'm gonna save money and not buy any more and I'll tie it together knot <laughs> to save money. So now I'm really nervous. I don't need that knot going out again. Oh, there's a fly line just coming out of the water. That's the brown of the fly line. We might actually, actually have a slight, slight chance of showing you this fish. And I'm gonna try and get it up and hope everything holds together. And you might see the shark on the surface because there's a short wire trace I've got. Oh. Yellow, by the way, for anybody who wants to know, is a shark's favorite color. True for in American Naval Academies where they tested floating dummies in different colours in life vests. This is absolutely true. And one colour that got eaten out of sight with Mako sharks attacking it was a yellow baby life jacket. 
Ladies, get rid of your yellow bikinis. Well, ladies, get rid of all bikinis. <laughs> there's a shark, there's a shark. I'll tell you what, that's a big shark for a fly rod. Now this is a classic example of how big this fish looks in the water like this with nothing around it. People might say, well, it's a baby. If we can get this fish up on the... <laughs> it isn't if. We can get this fish up uh, to show you. You'll see exactly how big it is. Um, whew, mama. What a day. And this system that we had of teasing the fish, not putting any hook baits out in the water, we put one out under the float, tied it on 15 pound line, put a piece of mackerel on it. That was our, what we call a tester. So if a shark came in the slick, bite straight through this light line. Oh my God, bloody arm's killing me. And then you're looking for a sighting. You're, you're what they call making a contact. As soon as you made the contact, Wayne can then cast at it, tease the fish even closer, and then I can get it with fly rod range. I've done it in Portugal, I've done it before. And this is a good shark to catch on a trout rod, I can assure you. Maximum sport. And I don't know what we're going to do with it now because it's right there. It's... Guys, my arm four is absolutely killing me. There's a salmon fly wheel. It's got this shark, which is a 50 pound blue shark. I don't know if you can see that fly. <laughs> That's one of the flies I tied up many years ago for blue shark. And I've got an egg sink on the front of that as well. So that is what's left of my very, very much chewed up fly. But I put two pieces of marabou. You might be able to see it there. And that gives it a bit of movement when you twitch it through the water, those pieces of marabou. But anyway, it's been done on Totally Awesome Fishing with a fly rod, blue shark, on our own, no guides, just a Totally Awesome crew. And this is what we got. It's already tagged. We're ready to get it straight back in the water in one go. If my arms hold up. Yeah. Now that's what I call a fly rod fish. <laughs> and the tag's up by the dorsal. Whew, I am cream crackered. Shark number 11 caught on a trout reservoir fly rod outfit. That is totally awesome. You don't want another shark, do you, Wayne? One yeah. more, go okay, on. Okay, one more. <laughs> okay, you know how I'm saying it totally awesome. Oh, are we going home yet? Nah. Oh. God, that's every bit of 50, that one. Every bit of 50 pounds. Oh, what a crackerjack fish. What a crackerjack. Go on, my boy. Go and tell your father what happened to you today. Under the boat and away. Well, there you go. That's our choice of the top five sharks filmed using our totally awesome fishing cameras. Thanks for watching the totally awesome fishing show. Check out our totally awesome outdoor show, another channel, free to watch, and don't forget our free download of the new magazine we launched called The Awesome Angler. We'll see you again out on the water.